Welcome to another episode of What Does That Do? In the last episode, we investigated a file dropper that was downloading a Fox WSO file into websites. In today's episode, we're continuing on our journey to take a look at what exactly this file is doing and what capabilities it has. So, the original file appears to be a binary file. And if we look at it, we can see that there are a lot of these multi-byte characters here, and it is rather unreadable. So one of the things I did to make it more readable was run it through this unutf.php script, where I folded all of the characters that were greater than 126 on the ASCII table into this set of 62 characters. The nice thing about this is that it becomes a much more readable code where all of the variables and functions are named easily identifiable ASCII strings. And in looking at this, we can see a much more understandable code base. The problem with this is that the conversion isn't perfect, and so we end up with certain conversions that shouldn't have happened, and so the Complete decoding doesn't work well, but we can figure some things out. Among those was that we were able to figure out that in this third function here, we have base64 decode. We know that this, that this is base64 for MD5, and we can see that by simply echoing out some of these strings in PHP. And we see BWQ1 is MD5, B3JK is ORD, C3R is Sterlen, and Y2HY is uh, CHR. So we can fill these in, and then what we can do is we can, fig we can take these functions into the appropriate place for uh, in the code. So we know that these are ORD. We know that all of these are base64 decode. This is MD5. This is Sterlen, and we get Sterlen over here as well in this additional for loop. And the nice thing here is that visual code is telling us that this symbol is defined, but it's never actually used again. So we know that we've gotten all of the instances of it. Here we have CHR. We can see that we're getting CHR here, and we're getting ORD. And the fun thing here is that, unfortunately, these strings are not being converted properly. But by context, we know that this is likely to be ORD, and that is likely to be ORD. And we know that because here we're doing a comparison with another another ORD call here, and it's converting the first byte of the string to something between 0 and 255. Here we are getting the first argument and using the index of the first argument and checking to see if, uh, and then dividing it by 2. So here... Again, we're stepping through the string, and in this case, we are also getting the, ord of, the ordinal number of that as well. And here, all we're doing is comparing it to either the second argument or the uh, value that's set here. So it's either going to be the ordinal value here or whatever we pass in in order to figure out what to assign to the next character. So. What we can do here is call this one first, and we know that this is reused, so we can just reuse it in all of these places to make this more readable and more understandable. Here again, we have another comparison with an ordinal, so we know that this, what we're looking for here, is the ordinal. We have the this variable gets reused a lot, 
So what we can do instead is change this and in the for loop we're not initializing it because we're initializing it right here. But this is not actually assigned at any point and as a result it's only used in those two places. And PHP, if it's not assigned a value, it gets assigned zero in uh, for mathematical purposes. It's an empty string, it gets assigned to zero, so that way when you do your uh, plus plus on it, in your for loop, it gets uh, as properly assigned to one. So here, this is our index, so let's call it index there. We'll call it index again. Things are getting more readable here. Here we're saying, we're checking to, we're setting the index to this new string here, which is equal to the length of the hash. So we know that this is a 32 characters. So we know that this is 32 here. And this is becoming the length of the new string that we constructed. Here we have our index again. Here we have our index again. We're resetting the index and moving back and forth along the index. This is the decoded text. So we can change this to decoded. And then we know that that is right here. Oops. And that's the decoded text as well. This is just our MD5 hash, so we can just call that MD5 hash. And so what we end up having here is, we'll call this index 2 to make it easier to read. Yep, this isn't going to work. That works. But if we change this to... Yeah, that is everything there. So, let's call this $MD5 hash, and we can go ahead and replace that here, and replace it here. We can replace that variable here with new string. We can call this decoded, and here we get the Stir length of that. This is always going to be 32 because that's how long an MD5 hash is. But before we go on with that, what we can do is we know we're doing some math here and we know we have these ordinals to figure out. And the fun thing is that if we break down this if statement here, if the ordinal of our first argument at the zero index is less than is less than the ordinal of this then we go on to doing some more here uh yeah so we do another large comparison here where we're getting the ordinal of that again and checking to see if it's greater than the second argument, which should be false the first time through, assuming that and it's less than this. So if the letter at this position is greater than the second argument, but less than the, the ordinal here, we take one half of the ordinal of that first, of that, uh, the character at that index. If, on the other hand, this is either less than the ordinal here or greater than the ordinal of this value here, then we just put in the character itself. And otherwise, if it's greater than the ordinal of this character, it ends up just becoming an empty string in order to construct the base64 text. And this is important because if we take a look at what an ASCII table looks like, 
the base 64 character set only goes up to 122 for a decimal. So we know that anything that is between 97 and 122, as well as 65 to 90, or 48 through 57, as well as character 43 and character 47, will be, should end up with an empty string because we're creating something that's going to be base64 decoded. So the key here is that this should, in order for this part to work, at the most, you would have to be at 194. So dividing 194 by 2, you would get 97, which would be a lowercase a. I think. So, what do you do when you're stuck like this? Back to basics, really. So, if we... Let's take this temporary file here. Let's go in to here. Interestingly, I have... This already has values in there. How did I find those values? Yeah. Right there. Does that actually work with what we had here? Let's find our base64 call. Here's our base64 call. Here is this. Here's our if statement where we're getting C4 in there. And then here we have it. Okay, so here we have F5 being used in and F5 as well here. So let's grab those and see what those are. Fox full ord vowels. We'll just call it ord vowels.php. So what we want to do is go down to where we have base64. Here we go. So base64 we can delete that entire thing there. We can go down to the global here and delete everything after that. And now let's skip through statements. Yeah, here we go. So this is going to be just a matter of echoing echo ord. We can get rid of that and then here we have the other ord, and if we look, that and that are the same, so we only need one of them. Echo ord, delete that, put in a carriage return, before and after those. Now we can find out what those are. 196 and 245. So now we know how we got these values here, 196 and 245 we can start checking to see, and this was the MD5 hash that we got. Again, we can check that by putting this into MD5 hash.php. Again, we can dispense with everything before that base64. And here we can see, this is where we set up the uh, MD5 hash echo md5, since that's all we really want, we can get rid of everything else, and then we run it. There's our md5. Yep, that's the correct md5. Hopefully, anyway. So here we're figuring out what these, the return value is, and what we can do is, since all of these, so here we have the same function, same function, same function. All of these are the same function. Here, what we can do is we can echo these out. And we know that this is that this should become explode based on the behavior down here. So we can do that. And then what we can do is we can just say we can exit this entire thing. At this point, 
So let's see what we get here. And what we end up with is, fortunately, we get some incorrect information. And this is important because it tells us some things about what we're doing and whether or not it's whether or not we're getting the correct behavior. So what we can see here is that if we go into tempfox here, this is coming out as RDR this is coming out as RDR caret two aught thirteen. Now the only function in PHP that I know of that has uh, aught 13 at the end is stir rot 13. So this is supposed to be stir rot 13. And then what we have here, that's stir rev. This one's a bit harder, but my guess here is that what this is supposed to be is gz un compress. And the reason I say that is because all of the other ones, all of these other functions that we have here are slightly mangled other than explode. This is strip slashes. And the common vector for these, for stir out 13, stir rev, and strip slashes, is that we're starting with str, and the result we're getting is rdr. And so my Assumption here is that what we have is a bad character conversion um, as a result of the unutf function. But now, if we if we go based off of these and we set them to the values that we presume they should be, so here we have this function here. This is actually just setting variable, uh, setting values in other variables by, since it's getting references to those variables, um, and it is taking the index into this value into this variable to get that particular um, that particular result. So this string is really what we want to get since it's just going to be a comma-separated list of uh, values or functions. We can go and... If we go and find our base64 again, and we do that, and then if we go to the next function, this is the one where we can simply do this, and we can get rid of all of that and what we have left is making this a little more readable here we have the function call that we just want to turn into an echo we don't need that remainder there so let's there's the return for the other function we can get rid of the rest of the file that way, and there. So now what we have is we have all of these variables here defined as this function, which is in the original. Now we can see if this works without any uh, any additional testing, and we get a, and we get the syntax error here, and that syntax error is on line nine which is this, okay, there. So, lo and behold, now we get a list of all of the functions that this script is generating. So clearly there are problems with the way that, that the unutf script converted strings and here we go. Here's the beautified version of this anonymous fox. Uh, no, this is not going to work either, because again, what we have is characters that are not properly uh, converted. So <clears throat> now we're going to have to just break this down the old-fashioned way.
Yeah. So let's go into test fox here. Let's get that uh, array of character array of functions here, and then we can go all the way down to the bottom here where we're setting these functions up or setting up these variables. So index eight is so this is file get contents and so on. If we put this back to the original, and we can break this down by hitting semicolons, it's not going to be perfectly readable, but it's going to get us through to the important part there. Okay, so now what we have is we have this function here that we started out defining and calling on the mod that modified base64 decoder. What we can do here before any of this is figure out what all of these are. And the easiest way to do that is, so let's duplicate these. And then what we can just do is echo them out. Okay. And undoubtedly, these some of these will be unreadable as well. But the main goal here is to see what, what we have. And in fact, none of them are, are unreadable. So let's go back into test fox here and we can start figuring stuff out. So this is checking to see if, or this is checking the PHP sappy name. This is becoming the die function, which we'll see used later on. Uh, this is the string CLI. Here we have micro time. 1000, argc, argv, http host, server adder, and remote adder. So let's get rid of these debug statements here, and we can take a look at some of the other things. The first thing is it's calling php sappy name and checking to see if it's equal to CLI. And if it is, it dies. So what we want, because we're running this from the command line, is to get rid of that. Next, it's setting a variable here to, ah, uh, here, this first one. So that's a global variable. So we can do that and uh, this is another one of the global variables. And 94 is the uh, function that we called earlier. So, or the, the decoding function that we found earlier. So let's let that run. And that gives us a very long chunk of Let's dump that into a file and take a look at it. And it's actually just the entire file. So this is getting set to the, uh, to the original file. And now it's checking to see if the HTTP host is set and that the server adder, adder is set and the remote adder is set. And if any of those are not set, it's once again dying, so we can get rid of that again. And now it is setting argc to be true times micro time, interesting, micro time true times a thousand. So a thousand, that's an interesting way to do it. Eval, doing an eval there, 
if if micro time true times a thousand minus the new variable that we've set is greater than a hundred, then it's going to exit again. So presumably it's checking to see if there's some sort of delay in here. And if there's a delay that's more than a hundred milliseconds or hundred microseconds, then it's going to ex then it's going to die as well. So that's another that's a pretty clever way to get out of um, to avoid debuggers. So if you had done this in a debugger and you were stepping through things, uh, this delay here would likely be greater than a hundred, and you would end up with the script exiting out there. So let's get rid of that. And now here we're doing an eval of this decoding here. So let's take a look at that and just echo it out and exit right away so that we can avoid any unpleasantness. And if we do that, then we get yet another debug of check. So if the string position of this is not equal to zero, so if it's Oh, that's interesting. Or not equal equal, so that's if it's false, then it's going to exit again. So in case you stripped out this part here, then it's going to exit again. So we should be able to leave that in. And now here we have it doing a whole lot of decoding of things. And we can see what those are. So it's checking for it's all checking for the presence of things in the original file. So here we have the original file and not you see is Well, you know what? Let's take a look and see what this is. Let's break this down. So we can echo out that so that's stir pause. This is pretty interesting. It's checking for the string position. And here is the first chunk. And here's the second chunk for the stir pause function. And if we look at that, checking the manual, checking for the haystack, the needle, the haystack here is this chunk which is likely going to be the entire file. And then here is the needle, which is likely going to be something along the lines of echo. And then what we can see here is it's calling if, so it's doing the not here. So it's checking to make sure that the thing is not present. And if it is, it calls one function, and if it isn't, it calls another. So we, we can actually echo these out as well, just to make sure. And now we can run this, and it is looking for that hash in that string. Uh, I'm sure that there's something there that I'm missing, but the net result is that it's deciding which function to call. We should be able to leave that in there. Let's see. What is that? Here we have a couple new variables, and it's not returning. Let's comment that one out, which, because of the fact that it's doing, there's the possibility of doing, of exiting there. Nope. Get that. Okay, so lo and behold, we have some string offsets here that are being set. And here we have A96. Here we have a function. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, let's figure out, see if we can figure out what that function was. A96 was the fourth function. So that's doing a gz uncompress. 
And so here it's the at is to prevent it from throwing any errors. Let's see. O Y eight B is the fourteenth one, so fourteen. So here it's doing stir up thirteen. G Z uncompress. Eighty uh, eight C eight B. Is that one of the ones that we created here? No. 88C, 1B, 8B. So that's the decoding function. 9E, A divided 89 is the ninth. So substur of this guy. Right, okay, so substur of the file that we've created. And we're looking at that substur from, let's do that again. So we're looking at that substur from negative 15, 4, 10, all the way to negative 46. And then we're returning that. So why don't we echo that out and see what we what we're actually returning here. Test Fox, it's returning nothing. That's not helpful. Which means, actually, the indices are getting screwed up by what we've done to change this file. So if we go to the end here and we do, that puts us at the very beginning of that of this text. And then it's looking for everything through there. Okay. So that is definitely. So it wants the substring and it wants to send that through the decoded stuff. Let's see if we can get this decoded. Let's take that out. Okay, so, okay. Well, let's break this down. Let's see if this, nope. So this substring is not working. So we know that this variable here is getting set. So let's, Let's see if we get, okay, so we are getting a substring back. And let's see if we can figure out why this isn't working. And I'm going to guess that it's not working because what this should be is 147. So let's get back to the top there and now we get that. Okay, so let's take what we've learned there and put it in here. And lo and behold, that fixes it. And what we get is we get a new function that is a whole lot of go-tos and evals of yet another thing. So let's correct this. And, okay, so again, we have all this garbage here, but that we know that our decoder will work on that. And we can see PHP go to all of these code, all of this ending with an eval on our, an eval string of this function here looking for various globals, which then executes the decoder function that we had defined here. I'm 99% sure that that is. Okay, so if we do this and we dump it into test fox 2 again, and 
indeed it is that AOE function of ours. So what we can then do is take that PHP out. We can take that entire chunk out because we now have it decoded. We can echo this to see what we're going to pull back from it. Let's see, we have no comparisons in here. And we go to it up here. So if we settle in and get the, we don't want that. So actually, at this point, we don't need that function, we don't need that function. We don't need that function. We can leave this because all it does is return that. We don't need, or we do need this function because we're going to be decoding things again. Here we have variables. We have different calls to that string function. Here we're setting up all the variables with their appropriate string values setting up globals, then we get down here and we need to figure out what this is doing before we start messing around with the actual shell itself. So what does this guy become? So this is not getting executed. Actually, you know what? What we can do, let's get rid of all of this. We have a perfectly good modified Fox script. What we can do is cat test Fox two to the end of test Fox. And now since we've removed that, we can now step through this and figure out what's going on. So here we're defining a whole bunch of variables as being that decoder again. Here we're decoding something. So what is this? All of that. So that is underscore f underscore. Then we are calling that function there is being called on underscore f underscore. A A E. Okay, let's take a look here. That's not helpful either. So what's left really is to figure out what this is doing. Utterly unhelpful. Here we're setting some more variables. The first one is, this one is sterev. This one is GZ inflate. This one is substir. And this one is hex to bin. Okay, we have another decoding here. This one, it's just doing a straight eval. So, really, what we want to do is echo what it's going to be doing before it can do it. And we see that it's doing echo base64 of one of these variables. Uh, oh, 87, 87, oh, 97. So it's doing a eval base64 decode of this. So we can just check this out. And that's where we get the zero. So why is out? Oh, and that's because 
Let's try that. Nope. This is getting the return value of this function here. Oh, but we messed up the indices again. So we're going to be smart about this. And somewhere in here we have, so this variable is this. And we know that this function call here is setting up So this is base64 encoding the output of that, so that way it can be evaled here. That is ridiculous. I'm just going to say that right there. That is ridiculous. Okay, so let us step through this and clean it up so that way we can get it properly eval. This looks a lot like the dropper itself with the Hex to bin 30, hex to bin negative 794, hex to bin 1172, and then the long string of evals that we've turned into a long string of echoes, or a single echo. Unexpected T string. Well, so here's the thing. We can get away with this. We know that this is just base64 encoding the shell, and then base64 decoding it and evaling. So let's just put this over into another file. Okay, so here we have all of this. We don't need that function anymore. We don't even need, I don't think we're going to need any of those, but we don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need any of that. We can take all of those backslashes out. And now we can start replacing that is stirrev. Now we can take this and turn it into GZ inflate. Then we can take this and turn it into substir. And now we can take this and turn it everywhere into hex to bin. So really all we need is this decoding function here, which is self-contained. So we can get rid of, well, we can leave these functions here. And what we are left with is go to PJI, which is just defining this function. 
it just defines this function here, EAE, right here, which then goes to WOY, which is here, then MFYY, which is here, and that just does the return, and then go to AP, which is literally just closing bracket, and then it goes back to up here, and then to here where it's setting up base64 decode, then it's defining another, the other function, grabbing the global there, going to FBD, which is grabbing the base64 global. You can sort of see where this is going if you watched the other video, then it's returning the string reversed GZ inflated base64 decoded contents of this, which is really just the whatever you pass into this function itself, uh, then it's going to you know, GYE, and then lastly it's going, it ends up going to CAHLJ, which is the echo, or the eval that we've created. So that is what it ends up doing. Let's see, one, two, so it needs two more after that. Okay, and now we get, now we, now we're getting somewhere. Now we have an, yet another iteration of this. So if we drop this into test box three, it does not seem to be referencing anything else. How many evals are there? Just the one. So we should be able to just do that. And we get more base64. Let's dump that to testfox4.php. And now we have something that we're pretty much all familiar with. We have a web shell. A much more common Let's dump this into test fox 5. Let's put in PHP in here. Let's run through this and okay, we have a lot more. Here we have our action. We are doing get content, file get contents. Okay, globals here is it doing the explode and of the GZ inflated of the GZ inflated fun stuff. So what we can do here, print our globals, php test box 5. Look at that. We have a whole lot of, we have 1,700 different uh, variables being set. Back connect functionality, network tool functionality, some base64 strings, cPanel, lots of fun, pulls in from some CSS, database reading functionality. This shell must be in the same path as the zip files, so there are zip file dearchiving. Connectivity to Zone H for uh, bragging rights. Google searches a lot of code. Encryption. Fox WSO. It is using Russian character sets. Some more anonymous Fox calls for images. Showing your IP info, your PHP info, memory info. Exploit DB information, some more downloaders, links for downloading adminner, 
whole lot of file paths to look for. There's an uploader as part of this. It does symlinking, creates some uh, HD access files, Fox no in uh, an index of Fox no index. So that's something to look for if you're uh, if you've been infected. A whole lot of different tools that it looks for: scanners, binaries. Uh, it emails a security code. So that's. This is a pretty, pretty in-depth shell. Does some some uh, generators or hash searches. Pretty full-functioned shell. It kills off uh, mod security. Uh, installs leaf mailers. Has a self-destruct mechanism. Searches for the usual things that shells search for. Ooh, it even attempts some dirty cow uh, exploits. Some password checks. Uh, see if we can crack any passwords. The usual CMS checks and uh, linking lists. More HT access content, even more HT access content where it's actually neutering PHP. Oops. So actually, let's see. Get some Telegram info. Zip back up here. So it neuters PHP by telling the server to uh, render it as plain text. Uh, same thing with HTML and SHTML. So, yeah, this is a, wow, really in-depth, a really um, full-fledged shell here. Does a whole lot of back connects, either through uh, C or Perl. These are probably the Base64 encoded back connects. We can actually... Take a look at that. So, very basic Perl back connect. Grab all of these. So here's our C back connect, uh, Perl back connect, another C back connect. I'm sure that one of these is C plus plus, or maybe not. And another Perl back connect. <clears throat> so yeah, this is really fully fledged. And if we go into into this, here it's really just building it all up and doing checks on uh, getting file contents or getting writing out files, getting contents from different locations, creating sim links. So this is. In most shells, this is the just a long list of symlinks that it creates. Um, if we go all the way to the end, here it's calling functions. It's defining more functions here. Uh, it's a little bit of an ugly beautification, but it will work. It's interesting that it's doing bitwise ands here. Um, oh, and this is doing file permissions. 
So there's a global little uh, set file permissions. Here it's getting cookies and posts, combining those most likely, setting the PHP version, or checking to see if the PHP version is a specific level. This probably checking to see how many emails it's sent out and or how many passwords it's tried and how many have been successful. Does uh, MySQL checks? There's a scander function where it's searching for things in people's directories. Here it's looking for or it's making directories creating reset passes for cPanel. Uh, probably, yeah, so this is creating cPanel backdoor users. Setting up a bash shell. So, yeah, this is a gigantic, complex shell. It has most of the functionality, probably has all the functionality of, you know, the, the typical shells that we see, the C99s, the R57s, um, but it is definitely a, a unique uh, encoding and a unique mechanism for getting, for putting all of this stuff in place. And there you have it. So, thank you for coming along on this ride as uh, we break apart this anonymous Fox web shell. If you like what you see, hit the like button. That helps the algorithm out. If you are interested in being notified when more of these videos go live, hit subscribe. And if you have questions, comments, Leave a comment in the sec in the comment box and have a great day.